You have questions, we have answers. Back with another quick clip. We had an email from an individual that has been making gifts to friends and family for some time, and they just realized that there are rules that surround gifting. Would you give us an overview of these rules? Sure. Uh, currently, an individual can give up to $15,000 per annum, and if married, $30,000 to as many uh, individuals as you, you want. Uh, this is an annual limitation and is measured uh, and is adjusted every January the 30, January the 1st. So uh, every January 1st, the three winds and you start again. And you can do this without having to file any tax returns or any paperwork. So it's pretty simple. You just give the money away. And uh, as long as you keep under those limits, you, you, you would shake. So on an annual basis, anyone can give $15,000 if you're single or up to $30,000 if you're married filing jointly to anyone and to as many people as they want. Is that number indexed for inflation? Uh, no, it's not indexed for inflation. Uh, it hasn't been that number and it's grown very slowly over the years. It was pegged at $10,000 for a long time and slowly increased uh, and it's currently now at $15,000. And that's where we stand today. And it's not an automatic increase. So it'll be there until it's changed sometime in the future. Okay. Larry, many times people give gifts of cash. Is that the best asset to give? Or are there other options that people should consider? Well, there are better options, especially if you're trying to give money to a not-for-profit organization or to people in a lower tax bracket. And usually people would then give uh, equities, real estate, uh, stocks, bonds, and even some of their personal property like an art collection or paintings, any of that kind of stuff that has uh, appreciation that uh, would be good for gifting. So that way they don't have to sell the asset and pay tax on that asset. They can simply gift it away and ultimately that tax liability has been transferred. That is correct. Um, you, you're far better off giving it to them and let them selling it and um, and then obviously they can get a, a bigger a bigger amount of money because Uncle Sam is not involved. So Larry, when you're working with clients, what are some other strategies that you might recommend as it relates to gifting? Uh, ones that we often run into are people who would like to give money to a not-for-profit organization and typically they would be far better off donating stocks directly to the not-for-profit organization as, a, as we just discussed, instead of selling it themselves, paying the taxes, and then having a lesser amount to give. This way they can give the gross amount to the not-for-profit. They get a full charitable deduction for the full value. So it's what we would call a classic win-win for everyone. Uh, other examples that we often see are parents or grandparents gifting appreciated assets to, to their children or grandchildren, who in turn could then sell them and then you would presume be in a lower tax bracket than the parent. And uh, one of the most common, which we've seen more of late, is for parents and grandparents uh, to give money to a child to their 529 college savings plan. This is very popular because you can put the money, give the money to the child uh, and the money will grow and grow. And if used for school or college later in the future, it can be totally tax free. So the growth is tax free. And so just a minute ago, we talked about uh, the rules that surround gifting. What about the provisions in the 529? Does that change anything inside of these 529 plans? 529 has one unique provision where you can, as they call it, jumpstart it and give five years in advance uh, and then, then not pay for the next five years. So for example, an individual could take their $15,000 times about up to five times and put that in as a lump sum. And if uh, if it's a joint gift, you can do double that amount of money. So clearly that would be a large sum going into the five, which would then potentially have the benefits of longer growth as opposed to spreading it out over a, you know, a five year period. And that is unique for the 529 plans. That is a terrific provision for those that are interested in college funding. It sure is, yeah. Are there landmines that people should be cognizant of as it relates to gifting or a gifting program? Yeah, sure. There's always tax consequences and landmines to, to be aware of. And the most critical one is that when you give property to someone else, they receive it at, with your basis. Uh, so whatever you pay for the property is what they start with. It. Unlike inheriting property, where you start off with the value as of the date of the decedent, 
with an inherit uh, with a property that's given to you by gift, you start off with their original cost. And so, unfortunately, over the years, I've run into this problem more often than not, where an elderly parent would say to their child, "Let me just quit claim you my property, my house, or whatever." Uh, we may save some probate taxes down the road and, and whatever. It'll just make it a whole lot easier. You may as well just have the property now. Uh, that is a, can be an extremely costly mistake because then uh, the, the children will now have their property at the low basis and when they turn around and sell it, they could have a substantial tax burden. If they would have waited and rather inherited that property, they would have got a stepped up basis and could have eliminated the majority of the tax. Larry, this has been terrific. I really appreciate you being here and sharing some of your insight with us. Thanks, Brian. I appreciate the, the time and the opportunity to be with you. And if you're watching this and you have questions you'd like answers to, please feel free to email us at qa at Thanks for watching.